Om Shri Sai Ram, a very warm welcome to everyone present with us today. We will begin the session with three Om. Sairam, dear brothers and sisters, welcome to Cutting the Ties That Bind monthly meetup for June month. In the late 1950s, Mrs. Crystal and a close friend embarked on an experiment to make regular contact with an inner source of wisdom, which they eventually called the High Sea for higher consciousness. Since then, by consulting the High Sea, a visualization method involving the use of symbols evolved. These techniques can be used to help those who wish to release from attachment or reliance on any outer security or control, thereby freeing the individual to seek the help and guidance from the high sea rather than from these outer resources. And today, we will revisit some of the practices. So we hope you are ready and excited for today's session. Before we begin, here's a small reminder to sit in a comfortable position and reserve all your questions until the Q&A segment, or if required, we can take that in between. A small note for today's session, due to some unforeseen circumstances, Dr. Shivan Sola won't be joining with us for this monthly meetup, but we do have a wonderful surprise for you. With that, let's begin the class as I invite our lovely course facilitators Shravanti and Vishwa. Sai Ram, everyone. Sai Ram. Very warm welcome to all the wonderful facilitators and practitioners of the Cutting the Ties with Bind Method. We're so happy to have you all joining us today. I am Vishwa and this is Shravanti. And together we will be facilitating today's session. So let's start with our most favorite maple meditation. So let's all close our eyes. Sit in a comfortable position and make sure your back and neck are straight and aligned. Keep your feet firmly on the ground if you're sitting in a chair. And keep your palms on your laps, like little cups or bowls, facing upward, ready to receive from the high seat. And now in your inner scene, imagine there's a golden circle of light on the ground in which you're sitting or standing. The circle is as big as both your arms stretched out sideways with fingers extended. If you wish, you can imagine it to be bigger than that. The circle represents your safe space, your territory, where you are safe to be yourself. And it moves with you wherever you go. So as you settle in your inner space, your golden circle, in front of you, Imagine there's a maple with many different colored ribbons hanging from the top around it. And on top of the maple is a golden sphere of light, which represents the high sea. Now start walking towards the maple and choose any colored ribbon that appeals to you today. Hold the ribbon loosely in your hand and walk back to your seat, your golden circle. Now connect it to the high seat through the ribbon. At this point, you can ask to be shown any symbol of the high seat, any form of God that you like the most, or you can continue 
to visualize the high sea as a beautiful beaming golden ball of light. Now, hand over to the high sea. Any questions, any problems, anything for which you may be seeking the high sea's guidance. Go ahead and hand it over to the high sea. And as you breathe in, ask the high sea to send down your ribbon, whatever it is that the high sea knows you need best. Whether or not you're aware what that what it is, just keep breathing in the energy from the high sea. And as you breathe out, let go of any doubts or blocks to your receptivity. Relax. You can thank the high sea for this gift in, ret in return to your request. So now ask the high sea for relaxing energy. As you breathe in, feel the relaxing energy flowing into you through the high sea. And let this relaxing energy circulate to every part of your body. And as you breathe out, let go of any stress, tension, worry, anxiety, which you may have accumulated in the past few days or weeks. Go ahead and take deep breaths of this relaxing energy. If you feel any tightness in any part of your body, direct this relaxing energy to that part. And as you breathe out, let go of all stress, tightness from your body. And just relax. If you feel any thoughts coming up, just leave them outside the door for now. And you know you can attend to them later. Relax. Now ask the high sea for its beautiful healing energy. You can imagine this as an emerald green light pouring into you and circulating every part of your body that needs healing. We all need healing, whether it's physical, emotional, mental, or any other kind. So simply breathe in this healing energy. And as you breathe out, let go of any anger, pain, feelings of hurt, any distress or sadness, and even let go of any uneasiness you may simply feel in your body. Even let go of the feeling that you are unwell. Continue to breathe in this relaxing, this healing energy one more time. And let go of any uneasiness, any distress. Relax. Now ask the healthy for cleansing and purifying energy. You can imagine this as a beautiful waterfall pouring down upon you, washing away anything negative from the past, any negative memories, thoughts, feelings, any residual anger, fear, any feelings of guilt and shame, any old grudges you may still be holding on to. Let it all wash away as you bathe joyfully in this cleansing and purifying energy. Letting go whatever you're ready to, whatever that no longer serves your highest good. Relax. 
Now ask the high C to send down your ribbon with supreme strengthening energy. As you breathe in, imagine the strength of the high C pouring into you. And as you breathe out, let go of any weakness you may feel physically, mentally, emotionally, or any other kind. Just breathe in the strength and ask the high sea to pour into you all the strength you need to meet any situation in your life. And as you breathe out, let go of all feelings of unworthiness, any feelings of feeling of being limited, of any unworthiness. Just breathe out weakness, whether you're aware of it or not. Just let it go. Relax. Now, ask the high sea to pour into you its unconditional love. This love has truly no conditions, is fully accepting of you just the way you are. So go ahead and breathe it. Breathe it in because it's your birthright. Let it fill every cell of your body, every tissue, muscle, organ. You can imagine this as a beautiful pink light pouring into you, like you're a jar or a vessel that's been filled with this love. You can ask the high sea to fill all your thoughts so that all your thoughts are loving. All your emotions so you are filled with the feeling of love. And all your senses to be filled with love so whatever you are hearing, seeing, touching, is filled with this love, with this powerful energy of love. You can now imagine that this love is overflowing and forming a beautiful ball of pink light around you. And the inside of this ball is now filling with more love, immersing you in it. Immersing you in this experience of love, which is like a love of thousand mothers. So go ahead and just immerse yourself in this love, knowing that you're safe. And as you breathe out, let go of any feelings of guilt, anything blocking you from receiving this precious gift now. Remember, this is your birthright and nothing can stop you from receiving this. So go ahead and let go of anything blocking you and continue to breathe in this love even as it fills your heart completely. Relax. Whenever you're ready, you can slowly open your eyes. So now, over to Vishwar, who will share with us some beautiful symbols. 
So welcome back, everyone. That was indeed a very energizing and a beautiful maple, right? So let's now let's go into some symbols and let's all get ready to practice some symbols. So the first symbol today that we will be practicing will be the staff of fear, right? So fear is a crippling emotion, as we all know. And, you know, we can go to great lengths to get rid of it. But at the same time, it is extremely difficult to eradicate because it's so pervasive. It spreads so quickly, right? So most often, fears actually stem from childhood, from childhood traumas, and fear of even the unknown. So today, let's together practice the star of fear and release whatever fear that we have, right? So are we all ready? Let's get to it. So you may keep your eyes open or closed during this practice. So now reach up above your head and pull down as you would a lamp on a pulley, a star with a black hole in the center of it. And lock it right in front of your solar plexus, but a little distance from it. So into this black hole, similar in effect to the black hole in space where everything that enters it disappears, you will be able to release your fear. Now go back to the memory to recall a time when you felt fear. Allow yourself to re-experience the fear, but only just enough to observe where in your body you are feeling it. So for an example, it could be like a lump in your throat, like a sinking feeling in your stomach, tightness in your solar plexus, or discomfort at some other site. Just observe. And then what does it remind you of? Does it feel like a hot hole, an ice cube, a prickly thorn or something else? Now that you've identified it and its location in your body, as you breathe out, let go some of the fear into the black hole in the star where it will disappear. Then immediately breathe in the light emanating from the rays of the star to fill the space, the fear which you have just expelled occupied. So once again, as you breathe out, let go of some of the fear into the black hole of the star where it will disappear. And then quickly breathe in the light emanating from the rays of the star to fill the space, the fear which you just have ex expelled, occupied. Continue to repeat this breathing rhythm with the same fear, but not for more than five minutes. So go ahead and continue this rhythm. So again, breathe out 
atmosphere, let go of some fear into the black hole in the star, and then quickly breathe in the light from the star to occupy the space where the fear of that. And again, let go of some of the fear again. And let it go into the black hole and then quickly breathe in the light from the star. And let it fill the space with the fear of it. So now push the star back up above your head on the pulley, ready for the next time to remain with you. And whenever you're ready, you can slowly come back to this present moment. That was really beautiful. That was really so free and beautiful the exercise in Sankhi. We hope it felt good to you. So go ahead and let us know how that felt. We would love to hear from you. And like fear, there's another crippling emotion, which is guilt, which is quite paralyzing. And it's very common and hard to release this emotion because often the guilt, the emotion of guilt is held unconsciously and the cause is often buried. And the cause is often buried uh, and not conscious to the person bearing this guilt. And like fear, this is also deep seated and goes back to experiences in childhood where someone must have experienced very strict parenting and uh, has been uh, given very severe punishment for something they must have done wrong. So the feeling experience of guilt can be very burdensome on the heart. And if the guilt all the more is a conscious, is coming from a conscious act of having made a mistake or something that you may be regretting that you have done, maybe hurt someone or probably did something that caused her to someone or resulted in hurtful consequences. So the beautiful part about the cutting ties work is we have symbols to work on this, these heavy emotions and just release them for once and forever. So now let's do an exercise to remove guilt. So go ahead, close your eyes. And imagine you're in a beautiful scene where there's a body of water. It could be a sea or an ocean. Keep walking towards it. And on your way, you will see a small hut or a room. Go ahead and enter it. And you will find a black wet suit, something like that is worn by surfers. Go ahead and put it on. And now ask the high seal to specify, specify and indicate to you what is, what is it that makes you feel guilty even now. Choose anyone. Any guilt that you may be carrying from some negative action or an experience, from a negative thought or feeling you expressed at some time in your life. Once you've been able to place the guilt, ask to be shown how you can make amends for what you did 
that causes this feeling of guilt in you. Know that you're safe to be able to receive this message from your IC today and to understand what is it that you can do to make amends and be free from this guilt. Trust the first message that comes to you. And now, go ahead and remove the wet suit on your body. Either all in one piece or in small strips or pieces. And now pile the, these pieces in front of you at your feet, removing every last piece on your body. This wet suit represents the guilt that you have been carrying all along. So go ahead and rip it all out and place it at your feet and ask the I see show you how you should destroy it. You could be shown to destroy it by fire, acid, or in some other way. Go ahead and destroy this completely and make sure that you destroy every last bit and ask to be shown how to eradicate, eliminate all of this remains. Now, you can step out of the hut or that room and walk towards this body of water and go ahead and just plunge into the water and cleanse yourself from any subtle attitudes or any subtle patterns that you may have adopted as a result of this guilt. Go ahead and scrub your entire body. All the tools you need are available to you. And make sure that you're enjoying this exercise of freeing yourself from this guilt once and for all. And now, whenever you're done, you can step out of the water and express your freedom in any way you like. You can dance, you can jump, whatever you feel. It will help you express your freedom. Now, Keep walking ahead, away from the water, and you will see a tree. This tree represents a cosmic tree. So just keep walking towards it. And on the branches of this tree, you will now find your new garments to put on. So go ahead. Put on these new garments and thank the high sea for your newfound freedom from the skin. And whenever you're ready, you can come back into the here and now into full consciousness. Wow. 
I'm sure all of you experienced what I experienced, how relieving it is to, to just let go and just be free. Yes. Get rid of all the burdens. And imagine, up. imagine how much energy we will have mm -hmm. to create. Exactly. Uh, create all of that we want to create when we let go of it. Because yeah. it must be occupying so much yeah. of our active energies. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So true. Thank you, Vishwa. That was lovely. Thank you, Shakti. How are you all feeling after this? Yes, let us know. Were you able to let go of your guilt? Or even for the star of fear? Were you able yes. to release your fear? Would like to hear from me? Yes. Yes. Type in the comments. And meanwhile, shall we quiz the party? Sure. Okay. So let's see how uh, your symbol uh, IQ is. <laughs> Uh, you know, cutting dice symbol like that. So, what what is the symbol you would use for protecting yourself from external uh, interference? Someone interfering you with your energy, who's intimidating you, who's overwhelming you. What symbol would you use in a situation like that to center yourself and your energy again? Hi, Shivanti. Hi, Vishwa. We have the replies coming in. Uh, Shakti Rajasekran says very relaxing. Uh, Satyapadesh is saying very happy and relaxing. Uh, so to your question, the responses are coming as uh, beach ball. Beach ball. Okay. Yeah. Shakti says cylinder. And some more comments as uh, figure of eight and golden circle, golden circle and beach ball. Okay, okay. Yes, the Shavati will make the answer. So to some level, yes, definitely you can use all these symbols, but the most effective symbol would be the cylinder. And the cylinder is uh, a beautiful symbol that will help you Center yourself and your energies and not be controlled or affected by another person's thoughts, views, opinions that which may overwhelm you or which may be interfering you uh, with your own thought process. So, cylinder is the right answer. And yes, you can use the beach ball for to protect yourself from any threat, any external threat. So uh, definitely a beach ball and figure of eight, you can do an instant mm -hmm. figure of eight with um, a summon for two, two minutes. If you feel someone's uh, uh, affecting you or you feel controlled by their energies, definitely you can do an instant figure eight for two minutes. And that's it. So thank you. That was wonderful. Okay, Vishwa, do you want to share the next symbol? Yeah. So actually, before that, let me just ask, yes. right? Yeah. Um, many, I mean, we've been practicing the method. So what symbol would you use to overcome jealousy or envy? Any answers? What symbol would you use? Maybe you can talk about what jealousy and envy okay. are. Okay, sure. So we know, I mean, jealousy and envy are two different things. Often we, you know, we get, tend to get confused yes. by the two, right? Yes. So jealousy is where you are afraid that someone would come and take away something that you have, right? So it works on that fear as well. Whereas when you go to envy, it is where you're envious of what somebody else has that you don't. So both are very binding and both, you know, they just suck away the love and the goodness that is within us. And, you know, it makes us do all sorts of things and it just disrupts our mental peace, yes. right? More than who it is directed to, it's the person, person bearing exactly. it that suffers. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure we have all experienced jealousy and envy yeah, in different aspects of our lives. Yeah. But did you know that we actually have a symbol 
So let's see what they have. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nagina, are there any replies? Any guesses? Yeah. Mikro Ganesh says figure eight mm -hmm. and uh, similar comments. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, Neerja also says figure of eight. Okay. Okay. Shall we begin the answer? Yes. Okay. So while figure eight can also be used, uh, the most effective symbol, which is Phyllis herself has shared, is the worm in the apple. Which you can work on instantly. Yeah, instantly it's used to release the jealousy or the envy that you're carrying that is too burdensome on you and causing you to disrupt the peace within you. Right? Yeah. So how can we practice this? I'm sure you'd want to know. So, so Phyllis shares that, um, you know, she was actually shown uh, a beautiful shiny red apple, so which looked perfectly developed and ripe. But when she looked inside, you know, she was shown not in full by its outer appearance. It may look so beautiful on the outside, but inside it was actually decaying. And it was, you know, there was a worm that had burrowed deep inside. And, you know, the apple appeared to be hollow. And it's just like a person's heart, right? When you're filled with jealousy, and when you're filled with envy, your heart just becomes hollow because it's not filled with love. You're not acting from a space of love and you're only filled with jealousy and envy. So how the symbol works is where you actually visualize like a big, fat, puffy, red heart. Like, you know, the ones that you see in like um, Valentine's Day cards, right? So you see a big heart like that and it, uh, you know, See, you see that heart and it's shown that anyone desiring to rid themselves of these negative emotions can re represent this, visualize this as the symbol, right? And uh, then he, with the help of the high C, he can be shown to cut or dig down into it with whatever instrument the high C shows, mm -hmm. right? Until the worm that's inside is exposed, mm -hmm. right? So the worm will be exposed and then you can lift it out and you can get rid of it in however way your high C shows. Mm -hmm. Right? Do you want to do the exercise? Okay, can. Yeah, actually, but rather than That's, me explaining, yeah. I think it will be easier if we take you through the exercise together. Yes. So everyone, let's uh, go ahead and let's get rid of jealousy and envy within us. Maybe you can bring yourself to a point or bring your attention to a point where, you know, where there could be some form of jealousy or some form of envy that's within you. But don't get engulfed in it, just observe where this jealousy and envy is coming from. And then visualize a big, red, fat, puffy heart, like the one I just described. This is a symbol of your own heart. Now ask High C to show you an instrument to be used to cut the heart and dig deep into it to reveal the worm that's inside the heart. The worm represents the jealousy and envy that's within you. And when you're shown, you go ahead to expose the worm, to do it with as much intensity as possible and expose the worm. Once the worm is exposed, you can lift it out, and exterminate it or get rid of it in whatever way you're shown. Now this worm, it must be replaced by something which you choose as a symbol of love and generosity. So to give you some ideas, it could be like cherries, 
could be strawberries or cupids or angels, lotuses or even lights. And what is most important is find what is most meaningful to you. And don't copy someone else or don't take an idea from somebody else. Replace the worm the, or the, the space where the worm occupied with something that means a lot to you. Say it could be angels or lotuses, lights, cherries, just to give you some ideas. And go ahead and replace it, you know, let it occupy the space. Thus filling your heart with pure unconditional love. You can use this to remind yourself daily to fill yourself with unconditional love and to get rid of any jealousy or envy instantly. Whenever you're ready, you can slowly come back to this present moment. That was beautiful. So it is, it's so easy yeah. and it's such a like such a wonderful exercise yeah. and to just come back to seeing your red puppy heart back to yeah it. exactly yeah. right filled with love it's so yeah. beautiful so let us know how that felt for you we would love to hear how yes. that felt for you and let us even know if there is any symbol you would like us to talk more about today we'll be happy to or if there are any questions uh, for which you would like to understand how to use the cutting ties method to deal with that we have the replies coming in shakti says wonderful have never done this before vrs says thank you so much that was new to me Satya Bajrez is saying, learning for the first time and feeling wonderful now. So good to hear that. Yeah. Yes, they, this is uh, some of these are some of the lesser and uh, very effective, lesser known and very effective symbols in the cutting ties work. So if you have the cutting ties books with you, you will, you will be able to read more about these symbols. And yeah. Shavanti, there were there is one question. Uh, is there anything for uh, procrastination? Is there anything to deal with procrastination? And any other questions now? Yeah, and uh, we have replies coming in. Uh, it, it was a beautiful session and they are feeling very relaxed after the fear of star. So for to deal with procrastination, uh, you can use the symbol of hourglass. Um, you can, um, do we have the symbol, Navinda? Can you show it? Yes, I can show it. Not the floating hourglass, but the hourglass where the person is in the So an hourglass is a very beautiful, yes. So an hourglass is very beautiful to uh, a symbol to use, which will help you remove anything that's blocking you from flowing, anything uh, that's blocking you from reaching your highest potential. So the, if you're not aware of what the root cause is, you can go ahead, place the hourglass, so let's do this exercise now quickly. So go ahead and in your inner scene, imagine you're sitting in your golden circle once again.
and now you imagine you are pulling up all around you in the shape of this golden cone with the point on top you are pulling this golden circle up as a cone and on top of that cone is another inverted cone and at the center of this our glass is the high sea where both the points of these cones meet visualize the high sea and now ask the high sea to bring to you whatever it is that the high sea knows you need from anywhere in the entire universe into the upper cone just as you can see you can see some starry lights just coming into the upper part of the cone this is all the abundance you can ask for abundance you can ask for whatever it is that the high sea knows best you need now to be able to overcome this habit of procrastination So thank the high sea for whatever it has given you until now and everything it will give you in the future whenever you are willing to ask. Slowly open your eyes. So this is how you can use the hourglass to to overcome the control of procrastination and another effective symbol to overcome this habit of procrastinating is using uh, doing a symbol cut so if you are aware of uh, uh, a symbol cut uh, so you can just draw a symbol uh, on the paper and go ahead and do the figure of eight for uh, three four weeks four weeks and uh, at the end of four weeks, do the cut with it. So you need not think about what is the root cause, where is this coming from. The best part is that you don't, you need not, you know, worry about it too much. And as you're doing the figure eight during those four weeks, you will slowly come upon subtle uh, understanding of what may be blocking you, maybe subtle changes that you may want to make in your. Uh, in your daily routines that will help you come uh, out So at the end of the four weeks, uh, once you do the cut uh, with the symbol, that will help you majorly to be free from the control. And to learn more about uh, the symbols, the symbol cuts and relationship cuts, do join the foundation and intermediate course uh, yeah. of cutting the ties that bind uh, offered by Devas Unlimited. And I think Nagenda will tell you later in uh, we see that a lot of you have a lot of questions yes. in the yes. comments and yes. all of these questions will be answered in the foundation course and the intermediate course. Yes. So that will be the best. Yes. To really learn the symbol, especially if you're new looking to start to learn as a beginner, looking to start to learn the method, join the course and really learn from our practitioners and enjoy this journey. Yes. I think one question we can take is what do we do when we feel like not getting answers or guidance despite seeking or using high C? I think this comes during the main course, right? Yes. When you, yes. you really don't want to. So what's the question again? What do you do when you feel like not getting answers or guidance despite seeking? So, so that may, uh, it may be possible that you may be, if you like in the main exercise, when you're asking, handing over your question or a a uh, problem or whatever it is for which you're seeking guidance. The important part is to be receptive to the guidance. So to always remember that that's the first step and to not try to control what the high C, what the high C should tell you or not to try to control what you should hear. And often uh, the, 
the reason why we try to control is because we are afraid the, due to our own misconceptions that maybe the high C will tell you something that you don't like. Maybe the high C will ask you to do something that will make you unhappy or let go of something that's uh, valuable to you. Or there may be many such uh, uh, you know things that may be blocking our uh, ability to simply be receptive to the high C. And another thing is if in your uh, growing up, uh, years, if you were uh, exposed to a lot of harsh, uh, uh, you know, treatment from parents or any caregiver or someone, uh, maybe a teacher who said harsh things to you, and you may have blocked out your willingness to listen to an authority figure, or, you know, and all of these can beautifully be handled with cutting ties. Uh, you can do cuts. You can um, you can join the. Uh, foundation and intermediate course to learn more about it and understand what are the cuts that you need to do and what may be blocking you from simply being receptive and uh, flowing in your life joyfully uh, with the guidance of the high C because actually the high C's guidance only fills you with love, peace and joy and anything else is just remember it's not true. It's not true. Divine guidance is always loving and joyful and calming so just remember that and uh, keep practicing the maple and we'll do join the place i think so, the last questions we yes. can take was on the jealousy exercise yes. right the frequency yes of the apple practice so as we shared the frequency it can be every day whenever or as whenever you need it yeah as long as you need it I mean, then I think uh, also comes how often can we do the symbols for envy or jealousy? Is it only whenever we feel the need or on a regular basis, like monthly? Sometimes we will not know that we are envious. Yes, true. So you can, uh, during your maypole, definitely you can ask the high C, what it, maybe you can ask the high C to show you what what is it that you can work on, what symbol you need to work on. Okay. And, uh, and if definitely when you're more, when you're in touch with yourself, when you're aware, when you're honest and just vulnerable with yourself, you will start seeing your own feelings more easily. You'll be safe to see because jealousy, envy, guilt, fear, these are all uh, very controlling emotions, yeah. but we should not be fooled by them or uh, given to that control because knowing that they're only pointing to something that we need to work on. Yeah. So just feel safe in seeing what it is without getting attached or identifying with what you're saying. So, can you please talk about doing cutting by yourself without a partner? Um, Are you referring to doing a cut on your own? So the question. Mm -hmm. uh, you mean like, uh, yes, you can, um, okay. Yeah, go ahead. I think that's what he means. So if you're asking on how you can do a cut on your own, the best method, I mean, there are a few methods. One is, of course, you can refer to the workbook and, um, you know, read the, the, read the method to yourself, read the steps to yourself. Or some people also record their voice. They record their voice reading out all the steps. And, and that, them. yeah, and then you do it, you know, that will guide, you can play the recording for yourself and you can do it on your own. Yes. But of course, it's very, I think, as you continue, as the frequency of cuts are there, mm -hmm. you, it's very simple to, the, the process is really simple. Yes. And the more you practice, you'll get the more it. it becomes like, you know, it's like the back of it. Yeah, correct. So you don't have to, uh, so just maybe the first few cuts, you will, uh, you know, it will be helpful to record your voice. Mm -hmm. And if you've not done a cut, Till now, please do join the foundation and immediate yeah. course because then you know how to do it in the right way. Yes. Uh, and learn how to become independent in your practice. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's always better in the first part to take help from a yes. practitioner yes. so that you know that you're guided in the right path yes. and you're doing it right. Yes. And so once you, can, you get a hang of it, then you can. Yes. Do so you can write to us. Uh, um, yeah, our team will share the uh, share our email ID. Yeah. So if you need help with a cut, do reach out to us, and one of our practitioners will help you um, go through the cut. So hope that was helpful. And let's um, and if you have any more questions, please feel free to post it on the group. So now uh, let's end today's session with uh, the closing maple.
close your eyes go back to your inner scene pick up the ribbon from the maypole connecting you to the high seat and ask the high seat to send down the ribbon its unconditional love once again just imagine this love pouring into your heart filling you with infinite love and now this love must be shared in order to keep it flowing and life supporting so go ahead and imagine in front of the mirror one by one people in your life starting with your spouse children parents siblings just imagine each one of them coming one by one walking in front of you and put your palms together and ask the high seat to send its unconditional love through you to each one of these people whom you know in your life personally starting with your spouse or children just take 2 seconds and send this love right into their heart knowing that whoever is open can definitely receive this love and benefit from it send it to your parents your in-laws the close friends neighbors your colleagues your boss and now send this love to those people who who have given you a hard time so go ahead and imagine these people one by one walking in front of, coming in front of you at the mango receiving this love this unconditional love from the high sea to all those people who have made life difficult for you and now ask to be shown any group of people any family whom you may know or you may heard of whom you know desperately needs this love so go ahead and share this love with any family that comes to your mind and send it to groups of people to all children in orphanages on streets wherever they are to all people in prisons hospitals elderly in the old age home and share this love with all those who are lonely and are desperate for love lonely depressed sick now ask to be shown groups of people across the world who may be suffering with oppression terrorism hunger or any other kind of suffering go ahead and send this love from the high sea to all these groups of people and then ask to be shown different places in the world different places in the world starting with your own country send this love to your country and to all the leaders in important positions who have the power to make decisions that influence people in the country at large
Go ahead and send this love to all of them. And then send it to all other countries and places in the across the planet. And to all animals, plants, and to Mother Earth. We send so much love to Mother Earth for all that she does to take care of us, to provide for us. Express your gratitude as you do. And now, send this love to all of creation. And most importantly now, put your arms around yourself to send this love to yourself. You can put your arms around yourself like giving yourself a big tight hug and say it silently, but really meaning it. I love me. And now say, say it out loud and say it with all your heart. I, I love me. me. I love me. I love me. Yes. You can now start uncurling. Rub you. Just run your hands down your body to help you come back into the here and now. And open your eyes whenever you're ready. Thank you for being such wonderful participants in today's session. You had such a great time uh, taking you through this monthly meet. Keep practicing and keep uh, working on your freedom. You know, let go of anything that's blocking you because. You have the work and it's so powerful. It can just change your life. Thank you so much. Thank you. Enjoy the journey. Yes. Bye -bye. Over to you. Thank you, Shravanti and Vishu. That was a wonderful session indeed. And thank you for all the participants for being such amazing participants during our monthly meetup. It is amazing to see everyone committed to working on themselves using such powerful tools from cutting the ties that bind with it. So please keep practicing the methods shared with everyone in the session to dive further deep into CTDP practices and to continue to practice these methodologies and tools in a regular manner. We will be starting cutting the ties that bind foundation course and intermediate course very soon in the coming month of July. The foundation course will start on 23rd July and parallelly, we'll be running intermediate course, which will start on 16th of July. You may continue to interact with us through the WhatsApp group and the CTDB India email as shared in the comments and view all our videos through our CTDB YouTube channel. We are posting the number and mail in the comment section. We wish you all the best. It's always a pleasure to support you in your journey. Let's end the session with Shanti Mantra. Oh. Swasti Prajabhya Paripalayanta Yayena Margena Mahi Mahisha Go Brahmane Vyashu Samasta loka sukhino bhavantu. Samasta loka sukhino bhavantu. Samasta loka sukhino bhavantu. Om Shanti 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 Sign up.